Okay, so next I want to show how to use some of the more basic features of the NeuroElf graphical user interface. And I'm in MATLAB and I simply enter NeuroElf underscore GUI again. And uh, this then should bring up the GUI. This is the full size version of the GUI other than at the end of the installation video to show a few more of the features. As you can see on the left hand side there is a bunch of drop down boxes and list boxes in an edit field that then shows the content of loaded objects and on the right hand side there is um, three panels by uh, default that show uh, the data set and uh, the first feature is that you can easily, as with most programs, just browse around the data. And on this side, you control the kind of page or view that you're looking at. This button is um, showing the three canonical views. This is just the sagittal slice. This is just the coronal slice. And this is just the um, transversal slice. So if you click one of these buttons, it will change the view to represent just um, this type of uh, um, view. Now I'm going to load a statistical data set um, and um, NeuroElf keeps track of files that you uh, load but I will um, simply say file open and the file that I'm loading is a .glm file which is one of Brain Voyager QAccess file formats and contains results of a general linear model. In this case it's a study with 38 subjects and once you load this file you will then see that uh, the next uh, um, section, which is uh, a list box containing the statistical maps, has been filled. And um, once again, you can browse around the data set with statistical data overlaid. And by clicking into the list box, you can then select which of the statistical maps you want to overlay. In this case, the maps are just um, beta maps, so they're not yet, uh, um, I would say, ready for consumption. And um, to actually perform a statistical test, um, I'm now picking from the analysis menu the contrast manager, which allows me to define and run a contrast. Um, so in the contrast manager, which I will explain in a different video, you can configure contrasts. And for the purpose of uh, this demonstration, I will just now compute one um, contrast, which I can then use for the demonstration. Um, once I select this contrast, I can change the statistical threshold, and the drop-down box contains only uncorrected values, so it's important to keep this in mind. Um, but it automatically corrects for the number of tails of the statistic that are displayed. Since this is a contrast, which is just one of the conditions over baseline, I will now select a relatively uh, um, conservative threshold, um, and then this still gives uh, um, very, very uh, statistically significant results. In the values at cursor box, you can observe the statistical value, which in this case is a t-score of 13.39. So that's really a very statistical uh, significant um, result. Um, once you have these maps, they can be thresholded by um, a height threshold, which is the t, minimal t-score, and they also can be thresholded by applying a cluster size threshold, which I will also set to relatively um, large extents, let's say 80 voxels, and then some of the activation that um, was there earlier goes away because it just doesn't match this uh, um, combined height and size threshold. Um, and another feature of the basic uh, GUI is that once you uh, um, show a statistical map, you can click the cluster table button and it will then show um, uh, clusters uh, um, and you can click one of the clusters which will um, set the coordinate to the peak voxel and um, if you um, click this button again you can also observe that it prints out a table. It might seem um, poorly formatted but you can simply copy and paste this into a text editor or into Excel and then it will be perfectly formatted for these programs. Um, Okay, that's pretty much all for the very, very basic usage of the UI, and um, further uses will be in additional videos. Thanks for watching.